I am transforming this jewelry box into a terrarium and this zebra isopod and some dairy cow isopods will move in. First thing we need is, of course, a jewelry box. I threw out my girlfriend's rings and got to work. I wanted to test if this box was waterproof. And as you can see, it is perfectly, completely waterproof. Yeah, we're going to have to fix this. I'm sealing the edges with some silicone. I know transparent silicone might be better, but this is what I had at home and I was too lazy and too broke to go to the store. You can cut off excess silicone with a knife easily. I used some black tape to cover up the white silicone. First, I put in a plastic divider to also include a water part, but this didn't work out, so I took it out again. Still looks like shit, but you just wait for the end result. It will be... less shit. For substrate, I used cocoa fiber. This is great for keeping the substrate moist. And I also used just garden soil. This will contain already a lot of nutrients and microorganisms. I mix these two together to create the soil I will use in the terrarium. I'm not adding a false bottom of rocks in this terrarium. Because I'm adding isopods, I have to keep a close eye on the humidity level in the terrarium anyway. So a false bottom is not needed. I'm placing these rocks so they look like a bit of mountains in the back of the terrarium. Just placing them side by side. This is great for giving the terrarium a bit of depth. I collected a lot of moss from different species. You don't have to buy this, you can find enough in nature. Just make sure you don't take all the moss from one spot. After that I'm starting to add moss in between the rocks. Moss doesn't form roots so it can just sit on the surface. Some ice spot species will also use it as food. This is how it looks so far. It is starting to look a little bit better. Still not great though, so let's add some more moss. This one is getting a bit impatient, so let's hurry and add the rest of the moss. I'm adding the bigger cushion moss in the back and the flatter moss in the front. This is pretty easy, just like making a puzzle. These are some pieces of bark. Ice spots will use it as food and as a hiding spot. Dead leaves are great to give your terrarium a more natural look. This is also food for the isopods. Same for these sticks with lichen on them. After that I'm spraying the terrarium with rainwater. It is important that it's rainwater because moss doesn't like tap water. You can add enough because both moss and isopods like humid conditions. Now it's time to add the isopods. I have two different species ready to add into this enclosure. The first one is the zebra isopod. I guess it's not hard to see why they are called that way. Yeah, you almost can see the difference. For now I'm adding only one or two of these. First I want to check if they are doing well in the terrarium. Once I'm sure they are doing fine, I will add some more. Let's put them in. The first thing he wants to do is probably look for a dark place to hide. I will let him settle in while I'll add the other species. There he goes for a dark spot. This is a dairy cow isopod. And I think it's also clear why they are called this way. Yes, indeed, because we can milk them like dairy cows. Or because of their coloration, one of the two. I have a few of these that are ready for their new home. Let's not wait any longer because they're getting a bit scared here. I'm just adding them in all at once. They went exploring in all directions of the terrarium. They quickly found some places to hide. This one is a bit confused by its reflection. That is you, you idiot. Saying hi to the new neighbors. I also have a third species of isopod. But for now, I'm not adding them. Let me know in the comments if I should add a few of these too. The isopods are getting used to their new terrarium. 
But of course, we can't let them go without a housewarming gift. I'm giving them a piece of cucumber. And I'm adding some uh, white powder. This will make them active. <coughs> this is just calcium powder that they need for their exoskeleton. This one is already taking a sniff uh, bite. As you can see, this jewelry box is perfect as a terrarium for isopods. If you enjoyed this video, you will probably like this one too. Thanks for watching.